Hello there. In this video, I'm going to give a brief overview of gel permeation chromatography, or GPC for short, also known as size exclusion chromatography. GPC is commonly used to determine the molecular weight and molecular weight distribution of polymers. The instrument separates polymers based on their hydrodynamic size. This hydrodynamic size is related to the molecular weight. It is also dependent on the structural characteristics of a polymer and its interaction with the solvent that it's dissolved in. Depending on the type of detectors used in a GPC system, you can determine several important characteristic values of a polymer sample. If using just a refractive index detector, you can determine the number average, weight average, molecular weights, along with the dispersity or polydispersity, and also provide the refractive index increment, or DNDC value of it. In multi-detector GPC systems, you'll often find a light scattering detector, along with the RI, which allows you to calculate the absolute molecular weight and radius of gyration. A viscometer provide additional insight by providing the intrinsic viscosity and the viscosity average molecular weight. Like I stated previously, GPC works by separating polymers based off their hydrodynamic size. This separation occurs by passing a sample through a GPC column, which is filled with a porous packing material. At the top here is a sample of polymers that are represented by different size spheres. As the polymers pass through the column, large polymers are only able to go through the largest size pores within the system. And as a result, they're able to pass through the column relatively quickly. Smaller polymers, represented by these green spheres, are able to pass through more pores and channels within the packing material and travel more slowly through the column. As a result, they will elute later from the instrument. So in general, larger size polymers will elute faster than smaller polymers. And it is important to note that this separation, unlike other types of chromatography, is not based on physical and or chemical interactions with the packing material. A GPC system will generally consist of the following components. The pump will constantly pump solvent through the system at a predetermined rate. Common solvents include THF or DMF and water in aqueous systems. Then you'll have an injector where your sample is injected into the system either manually with a syringe or in nicer GPCs you might have an auto sampler. Then the sample will pass through the columns where polymers will be separated based off their size. As the polymers go through the columns they will then go through the detector which sends raw data to the data collection software. After the polymer or sample goes through the detector it will go to a waste container. After running a sample through GPC, you can use the instrument software to analyze the data. You might ask, how do you determine the molecular weight from GPC? For more basic instruments, a general calibration will be performed. So a series of polymer standards, often polystyrene or polymethylmethacrylate, will be run through the instrument first, as shown here on the left. Using the instrument software, it will create a calibration curve which relates the molecular weight of the standard to its retention time or elution volume. Then, when you go to run an unknown polymer sample, as shown here on the right, it'll relate its retention time to the calibration curve created earlier, and you can get molecular weight information such as number average, weight average, molecular weights, and polydispersity. The disadvantage of a general calibration is that the molecular weight information is relative to polymer standards and is not absolute. Oftentimes, the unknown you're running isn't the same polymer as the standards used to calibrate it, or your polymer might have a different structure. It might be branched, so its hydrodynamic size would be different from a linear chain. That is why using a multi-detector GPC allows for further insight into the absolute molecular weight characteristic values of a polymer sample. In future videos, I hope to cover the details of GPC, and other detectors in more detail. But for now, that's all I have. I hope this video was helpful. Please comment or ask any questions down below. And thank you for watching.